Uh, this is the BY1 paper from January 2013. Uh, we're looking at question number two, which is on biological molecules. Um, so the question there is showing you um, the structures of four uh, biologically important compounds. All right, so let's have a look at number uh, or letter A. Okay, um, this um, compound is uh, glucose. All right, it uh, is a six carbon compound. Uh, the six carbon is that one there, which is pointing um, above or upwards above the molecule. Um, carbon number one is here, and attached to that is the OH group and a hydrogen group. So the important thing to realize is if the OH on carbon number one is pointing down, then that would make it alpha glucose. Okay, so that's the uh, compound A. Compound B then is um, only three carbons uh, long. All right, there they are. Uh, each carbon has an OH group attached to it. Um, so this uh, compound here is uh, glycerol. Okay. Now, moving down to um, compound C. Okay, if I scroll down, this one um, again is is pretty straightforward to uh, um, identify. All right, it has uh, on one end a carboxylic acid group. Okay, and on the other end of the compound is the NH two group, which is the amino group. Uh, so this can only be an amino acid there. Okay. The last compound, compound D, uh, this um, is a compound that also has a carboxylic acid group, which I've highlighted for you. Um, attached to that carboxylic acid is a long chain of carbons. Um, each carbon has attached to it um, a hydrogen atom. Okay, so that makes this a, a hydrocarbon chain. Okay. And uh, there's quite a number of carbons here, but uh, sometimes this molecule can have uh, far more carbons than what's shown. So this uh, uh, compound D is actually a fatty acid. Okay. Right, so let's have a look at the question then. Uh, part A, um, a chemical element found in a molecule of compound C is not found in molecules of, other, uh, of the other three compounds. Name this element. So if we have a look at uh, compound C again, um, this one, okay, if we compare it to the other three, all right, has on its um, amino group, you can see it has nitrogen attached there. So um, it's actually the element nitrogen that's not found in any of the other biological molecules that are shown. Okay, so uh, the answer uh, to this question would be uh, nitrogen. Okay, the examiner wouldn't accept just N. Okay, and uh, he's unlikely to accept N2, which is the uh, chemical symbol for nitrogen. It's best um, to do what he says, actually, which uh, is to name it. Okay, he's not asking for the chemical symbol, he's asking you to to give it its name, okay, and that is nitrogen. There we go, so next part then, part B, um, a reducing sugar in solution can be detected in the laboratory, um, and you're asked to describe the biochemical test that would uh, that you would use to show that the solution contained a reducing sugar. Now, the test for reducing sugar is to use Benedict's reagent, okay, um, the mistake many people make with this type of question is just to state that uh, you would use Benedict rea Benedict's reagent. Um, you'd lose a mark there because you haven't stated that you need to heat the Benedict's reagent with the uh, reducing sugar. Uh, so one mark is to state you heat reducing sugar with the Benedict's reagent. Uh, the other mark is to state the colour change. And here you must always state the original colour of Benedict's reagent before 
uh, it changes color. So the, the starting color of Benedict's reagent is blue, and um, the color change will often go to a brick red. Um, so the best answer there would be to state that the um, reducing sugar is heated or boiled with a Benedict's reagent, and the color will change from blue to brick red. Okay, so I've typed in the answer there. Um, the Benedict's reagent um, can actually turn uh, other colors as well as brick red. Uh, when it goes brick red, it normally indicates quite a high concentration of reducing sugar. Um, but the Benedict's can go through a number of colour changes. It can go from green, yellow, orange, and then to brick red. And uh, the mark scheme will, will allow um, any of those colours uh, as a correct answer. So you could have said the colour would go from blue to green, or you could have said blue to yellow, or blue to orange um, to get the mark. Right, let's move on to part two. Um, which of the compounds A to D will give a positive result with this biochemical test? So as I said earlier, um, it's going to be the glucose uh, molecule, um, which is um, compound A. Uh, that is the only reducing sugar that uh, is shown in the uh, question. Okay, part C. Which of the compounds A to D has molecules that will join together by peptide bonds? Now, anything PEP or peptide is going to mean protein, okay? And the building blocks or compounds that make up a protein and which are joined by peptide bonds are going to be um, amino acids. So the amino acid, uh, as I identified earlier, is compound C. There we go. Right, let's uh, go to the next part then. This is part D, which is the last section. Uh, which of the compounds A to D is a fatty acid? All right, so um, that would be compound D. I told you earlier that a fatty acid has a carboxylic acid group and a long chain of uh, carbons with hydrogens attached, which is called the hydrocarbon chain. Okay, part two then to uh, this last section uh, state how the structure of a saturated fatty acid differs from the structure of an unsaturated fatty acid um, okay so a saturated fatty acid is is just like the one shown in this question um, you have single bonds between the carbon atoms all right and each carbon has two hydrogens attached to it, with the exception of the, the terminal carbon, which has uh, three hydrogens uh, attached to it. Uh, so if I just show you a, a quick picture of saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. Okay, here's a quick image then of uh, the fatty acids. Now, uh, the top one here um, is a saturated fatty acid you can see that all of the carbons have two hydrogens attached to them, uh, with the exception of this terminal or end carbon, which has three hydrogens attached. Uh, so this would be classed as a, a saturated fatty acid. Uh, the fatty acid uh, underneath there is unsaturated because there's um, a double bond um, just by here, that is between um, a carbon atom okay now that double bond okay wherever you get a double bond you will have two less hydrogens um, attached because every carbon atom can only have four bonds attached to it so um, the first carbon here in green okay is um, it's got two bonds attached to it one to the hydrogen um, the other one to the other carbon then to the hydrogen down here and then to the carbon so that has four bonds because of the double bond between the um, uh, carbons there okay so that's the key thing whenever you have uh, unsaturated fatty acids 
they always have at least one double bond between a carbon and wherever that double bond is found you have two um, less hydrogens. Okay, so if we get back to this question, um, whenever you're asked really to state um, how something differs, it's always good to have um, direct comparison statements. So the um, differences here between saturated and unsaturated is to do with whether they have single or double bonds between the carbon. So you can say for a saturated fatty acid, there are single bonds between the carbons in the hydrocarbon chain. But for an unsaturated fatty acid, um, there will be a double bond between uh, one of the carbons. That is a direct comparative statement. All right, and that on its own will just get you the one mark. Um, the other mark is to state about the different number of hydrogens in the saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. So you can say in a saturated fatty acid, uh, each carbon atom has two hydrogens attached to it. Okay, and in an unsaturated fatty acid, you can say that wherever there's a double bond, you will have two less uh, hydrogens compared to the uh, saturated fatty acid. So the answer that uh, I've written in there would get you one mark. It's a direct comparison between uh, the bonds between the carbon atoms. And lastly then, I've written in the comparative statement um, regarding the fatty, sorry, the hydrogen atoms, uh, where there's less hydrogens in a um, unsaturated fatty acid. So that answer there should get you the two marks. It's, a, it, it's comparing two features of saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. Um, right, that's the, the, the end of this question two. I uh, hope you found it to help.